G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip I'm going to run through why I don't think you should build an aquaponic system like ours. Sorry for the clickbaity title and intro there folks, but yeah, it is true, I would not build this system the same way second time round, and I thought it'd be very helpful for you folks out there who've been following us for ages to um, know why that would be the case. Now, it's, it's not the whole system in general, it's worked really well for the last five or so years, Four of those years it's had fish in it, the last year we've had none because we've been renovating and I didn't want to risk them with any power loss to the system. Just quickly, I will be um, filming the new systems as they get created and um, switched on here in our backyard. Uh, also too, I've had Anita and John, thank you very much folks, uh, drop off a number of IBCs that I'm going to be using to film some um, DIY tutorial system build clips. Um, so if you like that sort of thing, aquaponics or just backyard farming in general, General, um, you can hit that little subscribe button down there and then click on the bell icon once it appears and you'll be sent notifications when those clips would be uploaded. It would also be fantastic if you could uh, share some of our clips around. Um, all the little views help the channel grow a little bit more, helps us reach more people and ultimately help more people. So anyway, I'll stop rambling on and we'll start up here with the fish tanks. Now these guys really aren't uh, an ideal aquaculture tank. I mean, they hold water and the fish survived in there and you know, they did fairly well. Uh, but in that the, the water circulation really could have been a little bit better. Uh, normally it's recommended that you have a minimum ratio of one unit of height to two units of diameter. So these guys are a little bit too tall. The reason being is it just gives you a lot better water circulation through the system. Obviously we're entering it through the top here and then it's exiting through the solids lifting outlet in the tank itself from the bottom so it just helps if it's a little bit lower gets a nice swirl on the water itself uh, helps with fish as well uh, fish like a bit of a current to swim against and with these tanks as you can see there's a couple of plug uh, plugged up holes in it uh, that's because I bought these guys from an aquaculture designer uh, someone that understood the ratios were a little bit out of whack so he had water going in in um, the correct place to create the proper swirl and movement and all that. Um, so the next thing I would have done differently is not changed from Paul's design. I've just figured that, you know, I'd try and make it look a little bit more like the other systems I've seen most people use in the backyard because that's what they were familiar with. So yeah, lesson learned. I definitely um, probably should have thought about hooking it up the way that Paul had it. Now, the next thing to do with the fish tank is the drain line itself. I have a two inch or 50 mil um, drain coming out of the fish tanks. Uh, that's fine and dandy. It was great for the amount of water flow that I had, uh, but what I decided to do was put it into a communal drain that picked up the waste from both fish tank before it went down into the um, solids filter. Now, unfortunately, um, my flow rates were a little bit too slow for such a large diameter pipe there. And I found that I continually got a lot of solids settling out in this pipe work here. What I would have been better off doing is what I did with the aquaculture system I built was have two separate two inch drain lines um, going down into the radial flow settler and that way they would have had the correct velocity to take all those solids and get them deposited out into the filter itself rather than collecting in this drain here. I mean, I've got end caps on both ends so I could flush the drain out, but it's just a little bit of extra work I really, you know, didn't have to do if I designed it correctly. Another thing I would change is um, the hose work that I'm using to deliver the water to the fish tank. The bore of that hose has slight little ridges in it and those little ridges can pick up anything from uh, bacterial colonies and also other solids that deposit out on those little ridges over time which can impede the flow into your fish tank. Now, you know, a, a little section say something like um, from, from there down to the ground where you have some PVC pipe or other suitable pipe set up um, that you can remove and clean out every now and then, something like that would be okay. Uh, but to have a, a run as long as I do here, that goes all the way down with a few other fittings on it down to the sump tank. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for the deposits to build up in there and restrict the flow into the fish tank. One of the reasons I did go with this hose is as you can see, you can manipulate it without having fittings in it because every time you have a fitting like that one there, or um, these fittings up there. As the water comes out and hits a turn in the pipe, a solid wall pipe, what it does is it slows down the velocity. And my logic was because I can do sweeping bends with the hose, it's not gonna slow it down as much. 
Um, yeah, now, now I know better and I pretty much will would stay with the standard rigid pipe as far as I can and then run off a small section of hose. Uh, now with the pipe itself, especially coming to the fish tank, I've gone down from a 40 mil to a 25 mil, which is an inch and a half to a um, one inch hose because the pump that I'm using at the moment has a inch and a half fitting or 40 mil fitting. What I should have done is run the 40 mil or inch and a half um, as far as I can to the tank and then take it down in um, diameter if I had to or possibly taken it all the way up in the um, suitable diameter until there was a valve on the side of the tank. And in the new builds, I'll be running the uh, smooth bore pipe as close as possible to the inlet on the fish tank just to make sure that we um, cut down on the level of restrictions in the water flow. Now we'll pop on down and have a gander at the filters. Now this filter here wasn't actually made by me. It was made by uh, Paul Van. And honestly, I can't fault it other than the fact that I went around and ran a 90 mil stormwater pipe um, all the way up. It actually uh, works out to be about a three and three point something inch pipe, not quite 90 mil, but anyway, um, I ran that up the center. And because as I said before, I'm not getting a lot of um, velocity through there, not enough to push all the solids out. I definitely changed that, but Paul Van's design um, with the smaller um, diameter stilling well rather than the bucket I used originally and the distance he has it coming down in the um, filter itself, um, can't fault that. So the one thing on this filter that I would change um, is I would replace this uni seal here uh, with a uh, bulkhead fitting. Uh, this uni seal in particular has leaked and I've posted a, a clip on it. Basically what happened was the original hole was cut too large. So while this did create a watertight seal, whenever I plugged in a pump on here, it did form a little bit of a leak. It's a very easy hack. You just wrap some Teflon tape around the um, inside of the uni seal, pop it in. And yeah, as you can see, it holds water nicely. Uh, but I think you'd be better off having a bulkhead fitting here because uh, definitely, you know, a little bit of movement on your uni seal can cause some um, damage to it over time. I mean, in a situation like this where you've got a, just a pipe coming through a wall, it's not moving at all. It's staying there nice and firm and solid. You shouldn't have any issues at all. And same in like situations like this here. But um, yeah, if there's a bit of movement and um, pipe work gets bumped all the time, it might be a good idea to think about um, popping in a bulkhead fitting instead. Just quickly talking um, about tripping over pipes uh, brings me to another point. Secure your pipes. Uh, to begin with, I didn't have any uh, bracing there for this drain pipe. And we ended up with a situation where we think it was Miss Lizzie, our dog. She tripped over this drain pipe and separated it from the, uh, the fish drain. And we ended up losing a lot of water from the system and almost losing the fish. So I ended up putting this bracket here. So for the next system, if any pipe work is being suspended at all, I will definitely have some sort of a bracket system or bracing in place. So if anyone um, does trip over it, hopefully um, they might come a cropper, but the pipe work will stay in place uh, so the fish don't lose water and perish. So down next to the radial flow filter, we have a moving bed bioreactor. It's basically a biofilter. It does the same job as a grow bed. Uh, bacteria inhabit the, uh, the media in there and they process the waste that um, comes through from the fish tank after the solids have been taken out in the radial flow settler. Now originally we did have a Venturi down the bottom in here. That's the way Paul designed it. So the issue I had with the Venturi in there was that over time uh, I was having to rob more flow from the main line from the sump to get this churning correctly, which meant there was less water going into the fish tank. So what I decided to do was uh, just turn the Venturi off and I have an air stone in there and it's doing a fairly good job at circulating the media. It's not the best spread, but it's enough to give it some oxygen so the bacteria don't perish. Now, plumbing wise for the uh, moving bed bioreactor, there are better ways to plumb it up, I think. Uh, a lot of this uh, dodgy work has to do with the fact that I went with the 90 mil stormwater pipe. Uh, so next time around, I think I will be using the 50 mil for the inlet and outlet and we'll configure them slightly differently. As to how yet, I'm yeah, not really not really sure, so you'll have to wait for future clips to see how that turns out. Uh, the next thing you will notice is there's another drum here. Uh, this drum here actually doesn't do anything. Uh, it was supposed to become another fines filter, but all it's become is a bit of a settling tank. I don't know if you can make out down the bottom there. Uh, you can probably make out all the solids down there. Uh, a few do precipitate out of here, 
but the bulk of them just flow straight on through down into the sump tank. Now you may be asking why a solar is getting in there in the first place. Well that's because the uh, radial flow filters in most backyard systems are not good enough at removing all the solids from the system. Uh, there will be a lot of smaller finer solids that will then go through to the moving bed biofilter in this setup the way it's plumbed up and from there you'll also get other small bits of um, debris like um, dead bacteria that fall off the, the media as it's churning that will then move through into here and from there they will pass down into the sump tank uh, where they'll either be picked up and taken to the grow beds themselves or back that way to the fish tank and also to in back into the moving bed bioreactor if I had the Venturi on. So I definitely do think that I could have utilized this drum a lot better, uh, maybe even not had a drum there, made up some sort of a box mesh filter or packed this, this full with other media like I did with the fish farm, a bit of biofilter media and then maybe some um, aquarium filter matting on top uh, just to collect those fines and then wash them out um, you know, at a later date. I'm actually thinking about um, setting up some sort of an upflow filter for the next build and also playing around with the mesh filter as well so um, there'll, there'll be clips on them down the line. Now onto the pump as I mentioned before you can probably make out there's a larger fitting down the bottom there and then I have a barrel union and then a take down to a 25 mil pipe that is an inch and a quarter coming down to a one inch um, pipe so I am restricting the flow. Uh, I would have been better off running a 40 mil pipe all the way up to the top or maybe even had some sort of a uni seal uh, through the side wall of the tank directly to the pump and then taken that 40 mil pipe all the way up to the fish tank and then maybe come down to a smaller diameter um, later on just to help the pump provide a better flow to the fish. If I was to build it again I would have plumbed in the smaller diameter um, pipe out to the grow beds and I would have used pipe, um, obviously pipe to that corn, corner there where we have an inlet for this bed you might just be able to make out there and then another solid pipe all the way out to the inlets for the other two beds on the other sides of them and then maybe run up just small little risers from this flexible pipe to make life easier I could have um, used little pipe um, nut and tail jobbies and unscrewed them off and cleaned them out if need be but the smooth bore PVC pipe just would have collected a lot less solids than I know that are trapped in this pipe work here or sorry hose work here uh, so that's one thing I would have um, changed uh, as for the beds themselves I'm pretty happy with them, the, the height of them, um, they're easy for me to lean over and work on. Now the one big thing uh, I probably would do with this system, just move back a bit to give you some perspective, is I would change the um, entire layout of the tanks and the grow beds. Now what I would do is move these fish tanks from up here and I would have them down the bottom which is what I intend to do with the new build and I would also have the sump tank down as close to them as possible to reduce the amount of friction from the water going from the sump into the fish tank because as far as I'm concerned the, the changeover of the water in the fish tank and then from there into a biofilter is pretty much well what you want you need to look after first so your fish are happy and healthy. Uh, from there I would have moved um, the grow beds coming up this way along the back and along the front as well the only problem is, as you can see, I have my power box. It's got um, the air pumps in there that are uh, running the uh, biofilter and also the other bits and pieces like the backup and the, the car battery and that sort of thing in there. So what we are planning on doing and what we should have done in the first place is have that box over towards the neighbor's fence and um, then run all the power down the back so it's out of the way because as you can see it's, it's copying a little bit of sunlight at the moment um, so we could have had grow beds there and they could have been a little bit more productive than just a box that houses geckos. As for covers over the system well I definitely think I should have built a taller hoop house as you can see over there the cardamom has already hit the top of it and if you watched um, a couple of clips back I did a galangal harvest uh, the galangal had actually pushed up the um, shade cloth probably about a foot, foot and a half above the top of the hoop there and we had a tomato growing up through there and through the shade cloth so I definitely think I need more height between the top of the grow beds 
and the top of the hoop house. So there you go, folks. There's a few things that I would have done differently if I was to have a crack at building this little system again. And I do hope it helps you folks out who do come looking at my clips uh, for a couple of ideas to use in your own builds. Uh, do keep in mind there will be a couple more clips coming in the coming months, uh, looking at the rebuild of, um, or new builds actually here, as well as a couple of DIY tutorials for um, some basic system builds. Now, before I go, I really do need to thank you folks for coming along every week, uh, giving us a thumbs up and leaving comments below the clips. I really do appreciate it. It'd be fantastic if you could share them around with others as well, if you found them to be useful yourself. You never know, someone else might find my hairy mug interesting as well. Just give you one more look from another angle, folks. I really do need to uh, thank those marvellous folks over on Subscribestar and also the YouTube membership page and those folks who donate by, via PayPal every now and then. Thank you guys for your continued support of the channel. It really does help us out. You have no idea. Uh, there's also the super contributors. You can check them out in the description down below. There's links to their businesses, their Facebook pages. And if you could go over and um, check out what they're all about, I really would appreciate it. But I am pretty much all going to leave it there. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you can uh, be kept up to date with the future aquaponic clips. And I'll let you go. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.